in Ekel. When you Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my August wrap up part 3 out of 3. I read a total of 15 books for the month of August so these are the last 5 that I read in the month so without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I picked up for this part of the wrap up is When Dimple Met Rishi. This is by Sanya Medanon and I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows Dimple Shaw and Rishi Patel who are two Indian Indian American teens. They are in an arranged marriage for when they are older. The only thing is is that Dimple has no idea of this arrangement. Rishi is fully aware of this arrangement. When he introduces himself at a coffee shop, it does not go exactly as planned, and then they end up being paired off in a app developing competition where they get to know each other a little bit better, and it's like the story of their developing feelings for one another. This was actually a super cute YA contemporary that I think incorporated a lot of Indian culture, which I really enjoyed. I liked Dimple as a character for the most part, but at times she was very frustrating to me. Rishi was very sweet but he could also be very overpowering at times so sometimes he was a little bit too much for me but I did really enjoy how slow their relationship progressed as Dimple began to trust him more as the weeks went on. I really liked the alternating perspectives and how we got the exact same encounter from both Dimple and Rishi's perspectives and how different those perspectives could be on the same event. I think that the biggest complaint that I probably have for the book is that there wasn't really much of a focus on the insomnia con and the coding and the making of the app. There was just so much focus on the romance aspect of this book that I wish it focused on other things as well. So overall, it was a cute read, fun while it lasted, and I give it four out of five stars. Next up, I have a graphic novel. It's called Bubble, and this is by Jordan Morris. I gave this a five out of five stars. So this follows Morgan, who is an imp hunter who lives inside the bubble of Fairhaven with her roommate Annie. Annie uses these monsters that Morgan kills in order to make drugs, and when a app called Hunter arrives. It allows Morgan to kill these imps in exchange for a profit while still running her drug business on the side. And it's like the story of that. There's also a lot more going on, but that's the general gist of it. It's actually based off of a podcast, which I think is very interesting. I have not listened to it or heard anything about it, but I am very intrigued now and definitely going to be checking it out. The color palette of this is very bright and vibrant and just so weird honestly. The plot line and what goes on in it is so action-packed. It is so interesting to learn about the different imps and monsters in this book and how they came to be. Every single one is unique which is really cool. I found this to be hilarious. There were multiple times where I was laughing out loud. I personally think that it is very similar to the Adventure Zone graphic novels which I am a huge fan of. I've given every Every single volume that I've read, three out of the four, a five out of five stars. So this was right up my alley. I absolutely adored it. I also love these characters. Mitch is probably one of my favorite characters of all time now. He is so funny and just such a little cinnamon roll. Annie was also great. She is just a little ball of fire and I love the banter that she had with Mitch. Honestly, the banter between every single character in this was just so well done. I was cackling throughout the entire stories. It also seemed to leave off on a cliffhanger, so I'm really hoping that there's going to be a second volume of it and we're gonna get more of these characters because I absolutely love them, but I haven't seen anything that says there's going to be a second one, but you know. Fingers crossed there will be. So definitely recommend if you want an adult graphic novel, check out Bubble because it is so much fun. Five out of five stars. Next, I have Punching the Air by Ibi Zolboi and Yusuf Salam, and I gave this a four out of five stars. This book follows Amal, who is a 16-year-old black Muslim, and he is sent to prison for an altercation that he was a part of. And basically the story is his time in jail and his finding solace in his art and poetry. This is an extremely fast read. It is told in verse, which I am a big fan of in books. This I listened to on audiobook, and I think that the narrator did an amazing job telling Amal's story. 
I really loved how the authors chose a name that meant hope because his story was just absolutely heartbreaking. You could tell that Yusuf used his own experiences being an Exonerated Five member in Amal's story. I found it both insightful and just completely heartbreaking, so I definitely recommend if you haven't picked this book up, pick it up, but be ready for a couple tears because it's a lot. But. Next up, I have The Therapist by B.A. Paris, which I also gave four out of five stars. So after moving into their new home in a very nice gated community, Alice and Leo take the times to get to know their new neighbors. Alice ends up discovering a secret that Leo has been hiding from her, something to do with the therapist that used to live in their house. When Alice starts to ask questions to the neighbors about this therapist, nobody really wants to talk about it so Alice ends up becoming obsessed with finding out what happened to the therapist and it's like the story of that. B.A. Paris is one of my absolute favorite thriller writers. I just love their writing style so much and always really enjoy their books. This was no different. Big fan. It was a lot of fun. They are an author that you think you know exactly what is happening and then they throw a curveball and you're like what the heck? I did not get that at all but I love Love it. Like I had so many theories about how this book was going to play out and every single one of them was very wrong. You never really know who to trust in her novels and the narrator is usually an unreliable narrator which I am a huge fan of. It's like one of my favorite tropes in the entire world so this was just right up my alley. The suspense also builds very slowly until the end of the book where it becomes very fast-paced and you cannot put it down. Most of the characters were very interesting intriguing and I definitely suspected a lot of them. Alice did get on my nerves at times. She became way too involved in what she was doing and just needed to take a step back and breathe a little, but it definitely made the story a lot more exciting for me. I actually listened to this on audio. I do think that the narrator did a really great job reading both parts of this and definitely got me more immersed in the story, so... Four out of five stars. I really liked it. It was a lot of fun. And then the final book that I have for this part of the wrap-up is another graphic novel. It is Pepper Page, It Saves the Universe by Landry Q. Walker, and I ended up giving this a three out of five stars. This follows Pepper Page, who is a very shy ninth grader who lives in the year 2421. She hides between the pages of her favorite comic about a superhero named Supernova. When a science teacher at her school goes a little bit rogue during a science experiment, she gets transported into another dimension where she becomes supernova herself and it's like the story of that adventure. This was cute for what it was but I don't think that it was anything particularly memorable. I did enjoy the message of self-acceptance and I think it is a very important message to be sent to middle graders which this book is targeted towards. Pepper was an okay character. I definitely liked her cat sidekick a lot better. He was very funny, very cute. He was just like the highlight of the book for me personally. I did like the artwork and the colors that were chosen for this. I also thought it was cool that when she gets transported into the other dimension, the like border of the pages are darker than when she's in the real world. I thought that was a cool kind of concept to have. But yeah, overall, it was a cute graphic novel with a great overall message, so three out of five stars. All right, everybody, so that is my August wrap-up part three of three. If you're interested in the other 10 books that I read this month, I will leave the other two wrap-ups down below, and you guys can check them out if you want to. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye! Yeah.